Hello Calc Kids, welcome back to another lesson in calculus. This is Mr. Bean and today we're going to do our last lesson of calculus. This is so exciting. I'm happy for you. I'm really happy for me because this has been a couple years of making calculus videos and this is it. This is the last one. I hope that I don't have to correct a bunch of things. So today we're going to focus in on something called representing functions as power series. Now it's actually just a building off of our last lesson. So if you haven't done 1014, go back and do that lesson or this one will make no sense. So what I have for you on your notes is I've got what we did in our last lesson with this stuff just for a quick reference. So you don't have to keep looking back at it. Hopefully you're starting to get this stuff memorized because you do have to have this memorized going into the AP exam. You've got to know these things. All right, so what we're doing today, uh, really there's going to be some problems just like what we did in 1014, but I do not want to give you examples of problems like that because that would just kind of be a little bit of a waste of time. We've already covered those. So I'm just got a, I've got a quick lesson today on two types of different problems that you're going to see. And that is the first one is going to be dealing with how to take derivatives of a series. Okay, so there is, uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. So the first thing I want to do is we're going to write out some of the terms of this series real quick. So here's the first few terms that we have here, first four. And what we're going to do is figure out what f prime is. So there's two ways of doing this. So I'm going to just draw a line right here and divide up the two ways that we're going to do this. The first way is pretty simple, and that is if we just take the derivative of this series, you could take the derivative term by term, and that will give you the derivative of this series. So well, that's pretty easy. We could then just say that f prime is going to equal the derivative of each one of these pieces. So there's the derivative of these pieces. Remember, the derivative of one is just zero, so it's gone. So then I just have these three terms here, and it, it keeps going in this pattern. So now, could we come up with a way of figuring out a rule for this? Like, what's the rule of what is happening for each one of these terms? Well, it might seem a little bit difficult to come up with a rule for this thing, but if you look back up here, you could jump straight to it by just taking this derivative. And that's actually the second way of doing it. So instead of taking the derivative term by term like we just did, what we could do is just set up the derivative of this series. So I know I've got this written down here. I'm going to come back to that. Just give me a minute. So this would be, so the derivative is bring this 5n to the front. So it becomes 5n times x raised to the 5n minus 1 all over n factorial. So we just did the power rule. That's all we did. Now there is a little bit of a problem with this, and that is if n equals 0, and you plug in the 0 here, you're going to get this whole thing is going to be 0. Now think about what that means. That's because the derivative of this is 0. So that first term would be 0. Well, we're not going to do have 0 as our first term. So what we'll do instead is we'll at the first term n equals 1. So I'm going to change that to n equals 1. So that's kind of an important thing here. We're changing it to n equals 1 because it would make no sense just to have 0 as your very first term. So we don't want to say n equals 0. Now that is kind of cool. That matches this. right? These two things now match each other. And I could verify that by just taking a 1 and plugging it in here. So the second way of doing it is take the derivative of the series first, take that derivative of the series, and then start writing out what all the numbers are. So we could then take out the, take this and plug in a 1 and you'd get that is your first term, which matches this. And then your second term would be this. And that, again, it matches our second term here and so forth. So you could keep going and going. But what I also want to show you is you could, if you took this series first, the nice thing is you could simplify this. Watch this cool trick. I'm going to look at this n and n factorial. Think about that. n over n factorial. That's the same thing as saying n over n times n minus 1 factorial, right? n factorial is going to be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 and so forth. Keep going and going. So what I could do then is just say, well, that is equivalent to just this 1 over n minus 1 factorial. So this n can cancel with one of those n's, and I can rewrite this as 5x raised to the 5n minus 1 all over n minus 1 factorial. Now, why am I doing that? I'm doing that because... You could then say, I'm going to write down here, simplified. And if you simplify this right here, you'd get this. If I simplify each one of these terms, then it would keep going this pattern. And what's cool about this is this simplified would be that right there. Right? That's the rule for this one. So you could do the derivative first and then try to simplify your new series. Or you could take the, uh, the term by term derivative and then simplify those from there. 
Uh, either way works. Actually, you want to be able to do both. I'm just trying to show you how there is a couple ways of doing this. Okay, let's do one more problem. And that is the integral. So now we're going to take an integral of sine of t to the seventh. So let's remind ourselves, how does the sine work? I know you got it in your notes. I'm just going to have it written out here on my screen. So what we're trying to do, just like our last lesson, is let's evaluate what is sine of t to the seventh. So we're just substituting in t to the seventh to each of these x's. And then we get this crazy long thing. And all we did was just plugged in the t to the seventh into each of these. And then uh, that goes plugged in right there. You could simplify this to what would that be? 14n plus 7, if you wanted to say t raised to the 14n plus 7. Okay, so now what are we doing? We're going to integrate this. So by integrating this, that's really hard to do. Like, what are you going to do? U substitution, u equals t to the seventh, but then that won't work because things don't cancel. That's a pretty tough thing to do. But what we can do is write it down as a Maclaurin series, and then you can integrate this term by term. And so what we're going to say is the integral from 0 to x of sine of t to the seventh is going to equal, and then you do each one of these term by term. So the first one is just t to the eighth over eight. The next one, t to the 22nd over 22 times three factorial. Now I'm not gonna figure out what 22 times three factorial is, although that one's not that hard. We're just gonna leave it just like that because that's gonna take a while. Who really cares right now? That's the same thing. All right, next term is plus, right? So I did this one. Minus is that one. That one's a positive. T to the 36th all over 36 times a 5 factorial. Again, who cares what number that is? Just leave it like that. Let's not worry about trying to simplify that. Usually this would be a problem that would be a multiple choice. And so as you're starting to work it, you'd be able to look at the multiple choice ones and start to figure out, oh, okay, it's that, that answer. And then uh, this term here, because we're just doing the first four, so I can stop after this one t to the 50th over 50 times 7 factorial. All right, and I'm evaluating that from 0 to x. So now what do we do? We plug in the x and work it from there. Plug in the 0, subtract the 0 plugged in. Well, 0 plugged in is nothing. So really the answer to this thing is the same exact thing with an x plugged in. So it would be this here. Okay, so that's really the gist of it. That's pretty much all the new stuff you gotta worry about in this lesson today. Let me give you just a word of advice before we sign off here in the end of the year. Now that you're done with all the lessons, what you really wanna try to do with your uh, getting ready for the AP exam, just do as many practice test problems as you possibly can, especially free response. Get your hand on those free response stuff. Uh, yes, multiple choice, going through some tests, get some cram books, uh, purchase some of those and go through practice exams and really look at released free response questions. I know your teachers in whatever class you're in are probably having you do that already, but just look up at the old free response questions, especially the last two to three years uh, and those will give you a little bit of an idea how, what you're going to be exposed to. And the more you do, the better you'll be at it. Really, that's all you need. You just need practice and exposure to it. All right, so this is Mr. Bean signing off. Not only rock that master check and the unit 10 test, but let's crush that AP exam. I hope everything goes well for you and uh, that you've enjoyed the year of calculus. All right, I'm out of here.